Good morning, everyone. My name is Rob McClafferty, and I just want to uh, thank uh, John Furtek for inviting me to have this uh, short session on uh, chronic wounds and the things we can do from an endovascular standpoint. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about venous stasis ulcers, and we're also going to talk about um, diabetic foot wounds. Um, I'm going to take one minute to introduce Dr. Raju. Um, we're very fortunate to have Dr. Raju here today. Uh, it's the first time at this conference. I asked him to come. I got to know him uh, as president-elect uh, of the American Venus Forum when he was president. And uh, as you know, he was on the uh, University of Mississippi faculty for many, many years, and now is the director of the Range Center for Venous Disease and Lymphatic Disease. He uh, is a vascular surgeon and, a, and, by history, a transplant surgeon. And uh, many of you may not know this, but he was the first surgeon to do a successful single and double lung transplant in North America. He was the first surgeon to do a successful heart transplantation in the state of Mississippi, the first surgeon to do a successful liver transplantation in the state of Mississippi, and the first surgeon to do an aortic endograft in the state of Mississippi. He also has probably the largest uh, development of innovative techniques for open venous disease reconstruction and the largest published series for open venous reconstruction and for venous stenting. So Raj, thank you for coming to speak to us today about uh, the techniques of how to heal a venous ulcer. Raj? Dr. McClafferty, thank you first of all for asking me and uh, to come here and Dr. Furtek, and thank you for that extremely generous uh, introduction. Interventions to heal venous uh, leg ulcers. Now we can use an algorithm. At the present time, there are two easy ways to heal a venous uh, leg ulcer. One is by saphenous uh, ablation, if you have s significant saphenous reflux. In general, you need a saphenous vein at least five millimeters in size to put out significant reflux. Now, if you remove a saphenous vein two millimeters in size, that's not going to heal the ulcer more than likely. Now, if you look carefully, with uh, uh, relevant diagnostic techniques, you will find iliac vein stenosis in something like 70 to 80 percent of cases with uh, venous leg ulceration. The incidence is extremely high. Now, it's, it's easier to ablate the saphenous vein than put in an iliac vein stent. So this algorithm uses that, uh, uses that basis. A saphenous ablation alone, if, uh, uh, if the saphenous reflux was present in a large uh, uh, saphenous vein, and then you didn't have clinical features of iliac vein obstruction. <clears throat> now you do both uh, saphenous ablation and iliac vein uh, stenting, uh, first, if the saphenous uh, vein is kind of small, not the major player, or even if the saphenous vein is large, you have uh, significant uh, symptoms and clinical features of uh, iliac vein obstruction. For example, if you have massive swelling in addition to ulceration, uh, just taking out the saphenous vein uh, is not going to do anything to the uh, massive swelling. You have to do iliac vein stenting for it. Obviously, if you don't have the saphenous component, you look for a iliac vein uh, stenosis and try to correct it if you find it. And as I said, you will find it in over 80% of cases. There has been a revelation that uh, uh, iliac vein obstruction is a major pathology. Uh, for a century, we have been talking about reflux, 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 and that has become firmly imprinted in our uh, uh, psyche that if you have an ulcer, it has to be reflux. It was a major uh, finding that uh, uh, obstruction 
is often present, as I said, in about 80% of cases, if you look for it with the correct technique. And correcting the obstruction with the iliac vein stent will heal the ulcer in many cases. Now, <clears throat> this one shows uh, 192 cases uh, followed up to five years. And you can see that uh, laser ablation is 80% as cumulative healing. We haven't been able to do this kind of cumulative healing with, uh, for example, valve reconstruction. You can get short-term healing, but as the years go by, the cases will dwindle down. For stent, uh, it has been remarkable that you can get uh, very good healing, uh, cumulative healing that uh, the curve remains uh, very stable. That is stent and uh, laser ablation, that's stent alone. And the surprising finding once again that you can you can have reflux and abstraction. And if you correct the abstraction, iliac vein abstraction with a stent, the ulcers will heal even though the reflux remains uncorrected. That has been a major finding which has really increased the use of stenting. It is very difficult to correct deep venous reflux. You need uh, open techniques now, valve reconstruction, that kind of thing, uh, inpatient, uh, open surgery, complications are high. And as I said, even if you are successful, the healing rate will gradually dwindle down for uh, six or 10 years because uh, the reflux valve reconstruction uh, does not hold up as well. But stenting does. so. Uh, even if the patient has reflux, deep venous reflux, if you look, uh, look for an obstruction, you'll find it, the majority of cases. And if you stent it, you will get uh, uh, excellent uh, healing. That is without reflux, that is with reflux. There's no statistical significance between these uh, two curves that's going up to five years. Now you can do subset analysis, that is uh, softness ablation alone. These two blue curves are with and without axial reflux. Axial reflux is reflux from groin to calf. And it is generally considered a bad form of reflux. Uh, here with stent, uh, one with axial reflux, one without axial reflux, there is no statistical difference in these two curves. Now another way to assess severity of reflux is so-called uh, segment score. You, if you have femoral vein uh, reflux, that's one, profunda one, popliteal one, uh, long saphenous one, short saphenous one, but we can add it up and put a score. Generally, if you have more than three, Three is a dividing line. Over three is severe reflux. Less than three, not so bad. And there is a difference, statistical difference, uh, multi-segment reflux over three and less than three. But look here. Even with an inferior results in severe reflux, multi-segment reflux, two-thirds heal long-term at five years. That's, that's not bad. You can't get that with valve reconstruction at five years. So stent, even if it may be slightly inferior with multi-segment reflux, still yields very respectable uh, results in uh, stasis ulcers. Now most of the difference between the multi-segment and uh, three and less is because of post-thrombotic limbs. They are the ones who have multi-segmental uh, reflux. And there is a statistical difference in healing uh, between non-thrombotic and post-thrombotic cases. Roughly 30 to 40 percent of cases will be non-thrombotic and uh, others post-thrombotic. 
the stockings uh, become uh, a major item in wound care. And uh, only uh, original question was, uh, you know, you're putting in stents, you are uh, reconstructing valves. Is it because uh, they are really doing something or is it because of the stockings you are applying? So we never gave stockings to people who quit wearing them. If you did a stent, let them go. Without, I mean, they're not going to wear them. They've already tried and given up. And those patients were not given stockings. And those uh, who are uh, wanting to try stockings were given stockings. So we have nice two subsets. There was no difference whatsoever between stocking users and non-stocking users after uh, Venus, uh, Venus tent. Now that is uh, Venus stasis ulcer. The allergenic barrier is down when you have Venus stasis ulcer. So you shouldn't put chemicals, lotions, potions, etc., or antibiotics, local antibiotics. They will become allergic, and that itself will make the ulcer worse and flare up dermatitis. And if you just use soap and water and watch it, You'll, you'll have epithelial growth not only from the periphery, as you see in arterial wounds, but also from the center, because venous ulcers are superficial. They do not, uh, they are not full dermal uh, thickness. Any hair follicles that are left will sprout epithelium from the middle, and you can see epithelium in the middle, and uh, in a matter of, uh, six weeks or so, if the ulcer is about one, centi one inch or less, that is 2.53 centimeters, it will heal in a matter of uh, weeks. Now with that, uh, no potions, lotions, and just soap and water, and just endovenous correction, by about two months, most of the ulcers will rapidly heal. After that is a slow slog. So if you are going to send patients to wound care centers, first you tell them not to debride the wound if they can possibly keep their hands away. And two, if it is not healed by six weeks, something corrective needs to be done. There is a difference between small ulcers and large ulcers. Small ulcers, one inch or less will heal in two months, as I said, almost 80%. Most of the slow healers is because of large ulcers. So I think there's a role for ancillary techniques like skin grafts and cultured skin and pig skin, that type of thing, in large ulcers. In small, uh, one inch or less, uh, reasonable sized ulcers, uh, I don't think you need any of those ancillaries. About 70 to 80 percent of venous ulcers will heal durably after endovascular correction. Most ulcers, three centimeter or less, will heal within two months. This is a benchmark time frame for initial trial of conservative therapy. Even if initial compression heals the ulcer, specific pathological correction is necessary to maintain long-term healing. There's a trial called S-CHAR trial. It did a lot of damage uh, uh, in the way the trial was designed, and it has led to some unnecessary, unwarranted conclusions because of poor design. Anyhow, that remains the only randomized uh, trial at the present time, and that showed for long-term healing, you need uh, specific correction. Large ulcers may require skin graft or substitutes to accelerate healing. Stockings are not necessary after endovascular correction. Venous obstruction appears to be important. Stent correction will heal ulcers in 70% or so despite reflux. About 25% of ulcers will remain healed, unhealed. Most of these will likely be post-thrombotic limbs with multi-segment reflux. Some of these can be healed by treating large perforators directly under the ulcer, 
by thermal or sclerotherapy, the results are likely the same as prior SEPs or modified Linton with high recurrence, but sclerotherapy directly under the ulcer is superior because it is repeatable and minimally invasive. The rest of the unhealed ulcers will require advanced open procedures such as valve reconstruction techniques or vascularized flap transfer. Thank you.